So today's sharing is about verse 14 from our Shishi Radharas Sudanidi by Srila Prabhupada Saraswati with commentary of Anantadas Babaji. Radha Karava Chita Palava Valarike Radha Padanka Vilasan Madura Stalike Radha Yasho Mukharamata Kadava Like Radha Vihara Vipine Ramata Manome Translation, let my mind find pleasure in the play forest of Radha, where the sprouts and vines are touched by Radha's hands, where the ground is sweetened by Radha's footprints, and where the birds madly sing Radha's glories. Once again, let my mind find pleasure in the play forest of Radha, where the sprouts and vines are touched by Radha's hands, where the ground is sweetened by Radha's footprints and where the birds madly sing Radha's glories. Sri Radha's play first. Ananda Baba writes, Humbly, Shri thinks. Shri Radha's lotus feet are very rarely attained. Where can I go to find them? Suddenly, the darkness of his despair is dispelled by a ray of hope when he remembers the mercy of Sri Vrindavan, Sri Matirada's playground. Shripad is the object of Sri Vrindavan's mercy. How he was showered by the mercy of Vrindavan can be understood by reading his book, Vrindavana Mahimamrita. There he writes. Radhe, mm -hmm. before we hear the verse from Vrindavan Mahimamrita, we can say here that Prabhupada Saraswati is glorifying Vrindavan. How he is glorifying Vrindavan? He is glorifying Radhika, his Swamini, his Ishtadev. 
And when he is glorifying Radhika, automatically he is glorifying Vrindavan. And when he is glorifying Vrindavan, automatically he has to glorify the beauty, the sweetness of his Swamini. So, this prayer is actually his cry for mercy. I need mercy of my beloved Swamini, but I'm aware that it's very hard to attain her devotional service, her lotus feet, her direct association. I'm aware of it. But I have a hope that her place of loving pastimes. Radhe, Radhe. Yes. Uh, can you speak loudly, please, Baya? Okay. So Gurudev can hear better. All right. Thanks, Radhe, Radhe. Should I repeat something or I don't know? Yes, yes please. Go on. Go on. Go on. Uh, go on, go on. Okay. This was, because I couldn't repeat. <laughs> so, Prabhupada Saraswati is glorifying Vrindavan. He is glorifying Radhika. And it's going together. And he understands that it's very hard to attain Radharani's devotional service and Radharani's lotus feet. But he has a hope to receive at least the Kripa of Vrindavan, the place of her play, playfulness, the place like a playground, most sweet, most beautiful playground of amorous pastimes between Radha and Mohan. And he is saying, I want to please my mind by meditating in this play forest or playground, because my mind can be pacified, soothed, and pleased only if I meditate on this beautiful place where my beloved Swamini is always exchanging her amorous pastimes with her beloved. He is saying like this because he doesn't have any other goal, he doesn't have any other interest. But he is only focused on Radhika and automatically his heart is focused on the place of her loving pastimes. And this is also his place of living. He doesn't have any other place of living and he doesn't want any other place of living. He feels completely natural and situated in this place, holy dam, green Davan dam. He spent many years in other parts of India, but when he received the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came in Vrindavan and became Rajavasi, never leaving Vrindavan anymore in his life. Because he found the love. When, you found, when we found the love, we don't want to move anywhere else. 
he found his own position in that love. And he doesn't want to change this position. He found relationship which completely satisfied her, his heart. And he doesn't want to change that. So he's praying to the forest of Rindavan, to places of Rindavan, to dust of Rindavan, to the flowers, to the birds, moving, unmoving creatures. Please, give me your kripa. I understand that it's not easy to attain Radharani's lotus feet. But I'm not losing the hope. And you can help me, please, giving me your mercy. So this Vrindavan is a place of amorous pastimes, but also the place where the natural love is constantly streaming between Vrajavasis and Krishna. So this is unique place, very special place, which is in some sense it's not describe we cannot describe. We can use some words to try to describe, but it's not possible to describe. Eternal, transcendental Vrindavan, full of most pure love, natural love which is, exists in this Tao. This kind of love doesn't exist in any other place, in any other holy Tao. So this is the unique position of dance. And she but is praying, crying, because there is no difference between crying and praying when it comes from the heart. No difference. If there is difference, it means that there is no genuine praying and crying. Because this is the sign of thirst, sign of hankering. And this is the sign of position of devotee who doesn't have anything else but his Swamini and her place of exchange of love. Where? If I don't go, if I not receive mercy from Vrindavan, where I will go? They can send me here, there, up and down, but this is not my place. I don't feel natural. But when I receive at least the drop of mercy from the dust of Vrindavan, from the speck of the dust of Vrindavan, then I will be satisfied and my mind will be very, very pleased. So I'm trying myself to enter in these feelings of Acharya, to feel his feelings, to connect myself with his feelings through the feelings of my Gurudev <clears throat> and all other Acharyas. Yesterday in Japanese Sangha and in the evening in Croatian Sangha, we were talking about this connection, importance of connection. And it's not artificial connection. Main ingredients in this connection is love. So this connection with Radharani automatically means connection with Vrindavan and connection, connection with Vrindavan means connection with Radhika. All other Rajavasis and Radhika's beloved. 
It's not separate. I remember Prabhupada when he said, Vrindavan is place for relishing. For nothing else. Disciples one day came to Prabhupada and asked him, we want to open the temple in Radhakund. Because in that time, it was spreading of the temples all around the world. And Prabhupada asked them, why do you want to open the temple? And they answered, because we want to preach, like everywhere in the world. And Prabhupada said, no, Radhakund is not the place for preaching. Radhakund is the place for relishing. So through this simple answer, Prabhupada gave all direction how we have to approach to Vrindavan, all Vrindavan, through the feelings, through the heart, to develop attachment, to develop this passionate love, spiritual passion, not material passion, bodily passion, spiritual passion, and to, to be situated in Brindala, wherever we are. Gurudev, do you want to share something? Because we want to enter in the flow of Rindal. How can I speak about Rindal? It's so far away from me. <laughs> what did you say, Gurude? Ah, continue. Okay. Okay, sorry, I didn't hear. So, if someone wants to say something, like in the beginning, just to, to enter because the subject is Rindal. And to be focused on subject is helping our mind and heart to enter deeper, deeper in that subject, particular subject. I just feel to say uh, one small thing. I feel that uh, when uh, when we are thinking about Svarupa, Svarupa is directly connected with Vrindavan, with Radhika. So if we're thinking about Radhika, we are immediately in Vrindavan, in our, our Svarupa. There is our Rupa, there is uh, our Guru Manjari. So everything is connected. Again, connection. So just, just to be connected with one of these items, we are automatically connected with all Vrindavan and all Rajabhasis. So this is my feeling. Thank you, Dhan Viji. Thank you. Yes. Rupa Goswami is saying, Rajavase. Always think about Vrindavan. It's the one of the most powerful items of Bhakti. Satsang Krishna Seva Bhagavata Nama Vrajava Sei Pancha Sadhana Pada. Then it is remember me now. So this meditation of Vrindavan, listening about Vrindavan, remembering Vrindavan, talking about Vrindavan, means worshipping Vrindavan. This is worshipping. It's not only with the flowers, with the incense, with the ghee lamps, 
No, with all my senses, I'm trying to worship Rindal. And like Dayanidiji said it's very nicely, and at the same time to be fixed in Swarup, then it's perfection of worship. Dakaji, how yeah. he was showered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Shripad is the object of Shri Vrindavana's mercy. And how he was showered by the mercy of Vrindavan can be understood by reading his book Vrindavana Mahimamrita there he writes worship only Vrindavan where the divine youthful couple that have golden and blackish forms are always playing ever fresh playful sports worship only that window it means transcendental window with consciousness watch what is really going on there? And by being physically in Vrindavan, we are purifying our consciousness. We are praying to Raja Raja, Raja Vasis, to really become worshippers of this playground. Of Yuga Lakish. Mm. Every one of us has experienced actually the different kinds of approach to holy dham is existing. Many people are coming for because they are culturally attracted. They like Orient and countries from the Asia or something, and they are very attracted with this kind of colors, food, songs, dancings, dressing, specific way of talking, behavior and so on and so on but this is the culture way few of them are understanding that Vrindavan is beyond them but they are approaching from the religious perspective and approach and they understand so many temples are here so many Religious persons are here. So many Takurjis are here. And this place is very, very sublime. So I want to come to be there and always to think when I leave Vrindavan about these beautiful places. But their approach is ritualistic. If they don't meet Sadhu from Vrindavan, and don't, and don't receive association from him, to understand what really 
is Vrindavan at least a little bit. And then spiritual life is really starting. And understanding also is developing in the heart of and consciousness of such kind of person. And he understands there is a visible Vrindavan, but also there is invisible Vrindavan, where the Lilas are still going on and going on and going on and it will never stop. And when such devotee comes in Vrindavan. He's aware about that. And he doesn't see and look all this outside scenario which can distract him from his ultimate goal to become one of the Vrajavasis, real Vrajavasis, like Dayanidiji said, in his own Swarup wish. This means to become real Vrajavasi. And I remember Gurudev was talking about so many times about the dirtiness of Vrindavan, garbage of Vrindavan, so many bad things for gross eyes and gross senses. But actually, this is a covering which can bring all people who are not sincere to run away from there. And in that way, devotional service Eternal pastimes, Radha Mohan's loving pastimes are protected. It's a funny, but it's going on. But this sentence is very nice, this one. Here, the mind can freely... Here, the mind is freely running after the mellows of Sri Hari. Really? <laughs> That's the reason why he is pleased. We cannot be pleased, you know, <laughs> if we are not free. But this is real freedom. Real freedom is to put the mind in his natural position, to run. <laughs> After the mellows of loving pastimes. But, but, if one commits offenses with the body, mind, or words to either the moving or the non-moving creatures that live in Vrindavan, then one cannot taste this nectar of Hari Rasa. Offenses. This is my diagnosis, why I cannot relish. this beautiful nectar. 
My heart, mind is always full of offenses. I want to approach Vrindavan with my material senses, with my material ears, eyes. So in that way, what I see? I see garbage. I see the dust. Old age, which, which is going on in eternal Dharma. I don't see that. I see old age, distress, suffering. And this is offense. Because through my material consciousness, I'm trying to enter in a spiritual realm. And this is offense. I'm doing this offense with all my body, all my mind, even with the words. But in the same time, I hope that one day I will receive mercy. Because what to do? I have no other solution. If Radhika wants to reject me, that's her will. If Ridavan wants to reject me, that's its will. But I don't have any other place to stay, to love, to serve, to exist, actually. Because all the Goswamis are the Nitya Siddhas. They always pray from Sadaka wish, please, Raja Raja, Raja Vasis, give me your Kripa. They are Nitya Siddhas and they are showing us that we should always pray for Vrindavan Kripa. And no one can receive Vrindavan Kripa without Radha Kripa. And receiving Radha Kripa means to receive Ra Vrindavan Kripa. It's going simultaneously, hand by hand. But I have to be aware, because I'm still on the bodily consciousness of life. And Vrindavan is such a place. So we need the mercy of Goranga. Nitai Gor, Gora Bhaktabhi, to nullify and or to minimize, at least minimize these offenses. And to come in Vrindavan as associate with Rajavasis is not easy because they are unique. No one understands Vrajavasis. Only Vrajavasi can understand Vrajavasi. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu warning his disciple, if you want to go in Vridana, just stay three days. Otherwise, you will start to make offenses. You know, it's a warning. Because no one who is not Vrajavasi can really, really understand Vrajavasis from their outside behavior. We can make so many mistakes, conclusions, and make so many apparatus. Especially if we are so tightly bound with rules and regulations. Then offenses are unavoidable. If you are really strongly, tightly bind with rules and regulations, for sure we will make offenses. And this is what's going on.
And to make offenses in Vrindavan is not the same thing like making offenses in Navadvip. Replica of Vrindavan. So for that reason, we need the mercy of Navadvip, Nitai Goranga and Gora Bhakta Vrinda to minimize our offenses and prepare us really from Vrindavan. In this life, or maybe next life. Jai Ji, Gora Chandra, I feel bad. You want to share something, please? Just jump, just interrupt me. Jananda you want to say? I'm a little bit afraid if pro disturbing. But uh, this bus, if we compare Shurimad Bhagatam, 10th ten, canto, about 30 chapter, which mentioned Krishna disappear from the gopis, from Rasa dance. So at that time, gopis consciousness completely absorbed in Krishna. But this verse, Shripada, the consciousness completely observing in Sri Radha. This is completely amazing for me. <laughs> How Shripada getting real mercy from Vrindavan? Because why should Ipada get that mercy? Because I feel Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Radhika, Baba is Radhika. So Mahaprabhu gave mercy upon him. So he got mercy from Brindaban and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So his consciousness completely observing Radhika's beauty, Radhika's glory, which is completely Manjari or Baba Urasarati. And so here mentioned, mind is freely running after the mirror of Shurihari. So Shri Hari mentioned, of course, Sh Hari's name, in the Hari name, maybe Radhika is included, but uh, we want to, <laughs> we want to taste the marrow of Shri Radhika or Shri Radha Mohan. So this is, I just uh, comparing the consciousness in Bhagatam and this Radha Rasasdhan is, is completely amazing for me. How should Ipada getting real mercy from Vrindavan and also from Mahaprabhu? This is a symptom uh, who is getting real mercy of Vrindavan and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes, I want to say Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. Radhe Radhe. Oh. oh. You are here. We didn't see I, I just sneaked in. I came a little late. Sorry, I was outside. Now I... By your mercy, I can come inside. I just want to say what I feel so beautiful about this verse is that uh, when Shrimati Radhika is walking in Vrindavan, everything that is touched by her, the plants and the creatures, they all relish 
you know, her feelings and her touch. So I thought, my God, yes, I also wait every day for this touch of Srimati Radhika. I wait that she will touch my heart, my feelings. And I feel now, when I see Gurudev in Vrindavan, that is also touching my heart. I feel that just watching how Gurudev is dealing with the devotees, thinking prashad and speaking and sometimes chastising, it touches my heart also. And that is how Vrindavan is. We are touched by the love of the British Basis. And we are so lucky that we are so close to the British Basis by the mercy of Srimati Radhika. And I want also to pray for that my heart will be opening more, that I can feel more and not only be a zombie or a robot in this material world, but some lovely girl that is ready to serve Srimati Radhika and her dasis. That is my desire, my prayer, and thank you for this beautiful verse. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. And listen. <coughs> This is the beginning of Radha Rasa Sura Nidhi. And Sripad showing us how to approach Radhika. In his heart is it clear that he wants to be with Radhika, her maid sir. But in the purport we listen, that is very hard to attain. It's not easy to become maid servant of Radharani. So, what is his approach? His approach is humbleness, praying for mercy. I need help. And in this verse, he is expressing that actually every plant is from down, is more connected to Radharani <laughs> because she touches the plants and the flowers. The sand in Vrindavan is more connected to Radharani than me. The birds are more connected than me. And everyone is in the service. Everything is conscious in spiritual world. Everyone is connected by service, but I am not. <laughs> so, and then every book is like that. Starting with Mangalachan, Mangalachan. First, remember that I cannot jump direct, that I have to go through the process of receiving mercy by Gurudev, by the Parampara, by the Vaishnava, by Nita Guru. Then, I can approach that. And then Sheikh Shastakam, same thing happened. Second sloka is, oh, <laughs> everything is there, but I have no taste. I cannot approach that. I cannot relish that. Why? Because of my offenses. So much covering is there that I cannot taste the pure nectar.
And next verse, Rinata P, that is the approach. How I can change that to become humble. And that is the only way in Kali Yuga. Because everything is always full of conflict. If we cannot be humble in this world, then we will always be in conflict. <laughs> there is no doubt in Kali Yuga. Every, everywhere is tension, everywhere is judgment, everywhere there is impurities, <laughs> everyone is full of evil. So humbleness is the approach that Prabodhananda is showing here very sweetly. But later also always one beautiful thing happened. That through Vilap Kushamanjali, Radharasa Suranidi, through the Shikshastaka, always the mood is growing. Always it goes up and up and up, the feelings, the greed, the desire is growing. And that finally makes um, the devotee and Mahaprabhu to throw away all hesitation. <laughs> In the beginning, there is a very humble approach, but the desire becomes so strong that they finally say, I know I'm not qualified, but I want your direct service. <laughs> yeah? I'm so, how to say, I don't care I'm qualified or not. I know I'm not qualified. But anyway, I cannot stop desiring that. Boldly I explain, I want that, even if I know I'm not qualified. Huh? Because of the greed, <laughs> then they throw out everything and say, Radharani, I only want you. That is amazing. And what Goranga Sunna also say, if you are too much in the rules and regulations, you will judge others 100%. You will already think, or oh, he not follow anything. And then we make offense to someone because actually we don't know what is the mood of a person, of the bridge party, of the rickshawala, of the shopkeeper. They have so much more love for Krishna. <laughs> but we are judging. So that is a mistake. That keeps us far from getting the mercy of Radharani. She don't like that. To see with the mind and intelligence, and by our knowledge. I have to see with the heart. Shri Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you, Gopar Chandra and Suniti Ji. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Andaka, mm -hmm. can, can you continue, please? Yes. By the mercy of Sri Vrindavan, Sripad sees a sweet transcendental picture in front of his inner eyes. Sri Sri 
Lila Kishora Yugala, the playful, youthful couple, are playing Madura Vana Vihara sweet forest pastimes. Admiring the beauty of the spring forest with their girlfriends. Shripad is there in his kinkari form, engaged in their service. The forest is filled with different kinds of blooming flowers surrounded by humming bees, the cuckoos create a romantic atmosphere by singing in the fifth note and Krishna, the young transcendental Cupid of Vrindavan sings along with Rati Priya Swamini, Radhika, who enchants millions of Ratis. So sings, Krishna sings along with Rati Priya Swamini and her girlfriends and maid servants. How sweetly they play in the forest, embracing each other like a male and female elephant. The Sakis sing sweet songs about the pastimes of the Yugalaki shore, inciting erotic feelings in their hearts. Radhe. I immediately remember explanation of our Guru Dev about Hare Krishna Mahamatra. How Radha Mohana embracing each other very tightly, very sweetly, very lovingly. Like a male and female elephant. <laughs> Baba is saying here. Usually this comparison with elephant is using because you cannot control elephants. No one can control wild elephants. When they are running towards each other, no one can stop them. And when they embrace each other, when they are together, they are rumbling in the play forest like mad elephants stepping everywhere ruining everywhere completely mad and intoxicated because young intoxicated elephants are mad out of love and our acharyas in their songs many times are using this comparison about Radha and Mohan. And if you start to catch the elephant who is mad, intoxicated, it's mission impossible. <laughs> and also this is the mood of Radha Mohan, but also the mood of devotee who is meditating 
on their loving pastimes. They are full of anurag, passionate love. Imparakyaba and devotees trying to feel their parakyaba, their madness, their anurag. And this is only what can please the heart and the mind of Sadak. If he is doing deep bhajan. And now someone can ask, but this is contradictory. They are intoxicated, they are mad, wild, in their exchange of love. And on another side we have result of that, when we meditate on that. Madness in love. We are soothing our heart, making peaceful, full of pleasure. And it remembers me that in Srimad Bhagavatam Anantaji, um, Jayanandaji said, I mentioned that 10 canto, how it's written that by meditation on the loving pastimes between Radha and Mukha, all karma, material karma, will be vanished from the heart of a listener. And this is the only way how the heart can be purified. And we should have a faith, strong faith in that statement. Because if we don't have us and practice this faith, it means that we don't have actually faith in holy name. Because there is no difference between holy name and loving pastimes between Radha and Mohan. So I'm very thankful to the Guru too, because he gave such a sweet, simple for meditation explanation of Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And everything is inside of this explanation. All levels of bhakti, all craziness, madness of bhakti, all rasa is there. But if we are strongly fixed in our own position, then we can ravish. And Vridavan will help us also. He's, Vridavan is also one of the helpers. Daddy. So we continue reading. Hmm? If no one is hmm. sharing. Sometimes Priyaji personally goes to pick flowers to decorate her Priyatam. Divine buds bloom up when they are touched by Swamini's hands. They smile with their flowers, horripilate with their sprouts and cry streams of tears with their trickling honey. 
Please, Andakaji, repeat this sentence one more. <laughs> Sometimes Priyaji personally goes to pick flowers to decorate her Priyatam. Divine buds bloom up when they are touched by Swamini's hands. They smile with their flowers. They horripilate with their sprouts. And they cry streams of tears with their trickling honey. Different feelings are present. Excuse me, if you can open the translation to Spanish to me, because nobody is translating to Spanish. Okay, Baba Namrita, yeah. yes. Just a second. But uh, I'm not, uh, it's better to uh, read about this in chat, because I don't remember the name to ask. Uh, Baba Namrita is the name, iPhone de Carlos. I recognize his voice, but iPhone de Carlos. Thanks. Yes, I did it. Okay. All right. So when Mahabhava touched something, movable or unmovable thing, automatically becomes Mahabhava. The Mahabhava Swarupini Radha touched someone. He immediately becomes Mahabhava. And we can see here the signs of someone or something who is the touched. He is horpulating, crying, smiling and blooming. Different emotions appear in the person. It doesn't matter, is it a plant or a person. And this is possible in Vrindavan. This is only possible in Vrindavan. Because the Vrindavana is manifestation of Swarup Shakti. It's not manifestation of Maya Shakti. Swarup, deep inner loving energy, who creates Vrindavan. Vrindavan is not Brahma's creation. This is Swarup creation. Or ultimately we can say it's Radharani's creation. Excuse me, Spanish no se escucha.
the channel for translation to Spanish is open, just found in interpretation bottom. Yeah, Radit. You should do it earlier, my dear. Not in ah. the middle to stop ba everything. Baba Amrita, open your mic. Open your mic. Yeah, now it will work. <laughs> Thanks. Mataji, you here? Okay. So we sí, said... Escucha, gracias. Perfecto. So this is Vrindavan is manifestation, creation, let's say, indescribable creation of Swarup Shakti, not Maya Shakti. And Vrindavan is spreading everywhere. It doesn't depend on geography of material laws. Like a Krishna who is spreading everywhere, every time, the holy dam of Vrindavan is also spreading everywhere and all the time. Because this is the quality of transcendence. Transcendental holy dam doesn't depend on material time and distances simply doesn't and this is our great hope actually and if we are worshiping Vrindavan with our toes with our tongue with our ears with our heart immediately we are calling Vrindavan to come to us and if we really have strong consciousness and pure heart, it can be reality in our life. So it, this is the reason why it said that wherever pure devotee is, Vrindavan is with him. Because he is bringing Vrindavan in his heart, he is holding Vrindavan in his heart. In America, Australia, South America, Europe, Africa, Vrindavan doesn't depend on time, circumstances, geographical maps, positions of a countries. No, because this is Swarup Shakti. And there is no difference between the name of Vrindavan and Vrindavan. When we speak Vrindavan, we are calling Vrindavan. Like there is no difference, we know, between holy name and barrier of the holy name. It's the same thing with the holy dham. There is no difference. Jai Vrindavan, Jai Vrindavan, Jai Vrindavan, it means Vrindavan is here. For Vrindavan is no problem to be here. But we should do it with attachment. Attachment. Deep connection. Then it works. Then it really works. Because maybe we can think that I'm connected with Vrindavan because I'm going in Vrindavan. I'm staying in Vrindavan. But to be really connected with Vrindavan, is to be in love. This is real connection. And I remember Kishoriji from Japan a few months ago. She impressed me so much with her sharing, just short, very simple sharing, when she asked Gurudev, what is the difference between connection and relationship. 
And then I started to think, wow, please, Kishore, do you want to repeat it if you remember? <laughs> no, maybe I will speculate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, at that time, I asked Gurudev, what is the difference, connection and relation? Connection is like, uh, maybe this answer is like this. Connection is just like a bulb and electricity. It's connecting. It works, but without feeling. But the relation, definitely there is feelings. Is this okay answer, Goranga Prab? <laughs> yeah. yeah they... Feelings, love is real connection. We can embrace someone, physical, be in his presence, and we can think that we are connected like a bubble. But if there is no stream of emotions between us, then this is just connection, but without love. So real connection means love. And when we are in love with someone, maybe we can be in two opposite sides of the world but still, we are connected. And this is the spiritual vision of loving connection. Otherwise, this is a religious vision. I came to Vrindavan, I spent this and that so many days and years or whatever, and I came home. Home, where is your home? <laughs> but if I'm really connected with Vrindavan, then it's really love. So we need attachment, strong, passionate, loving attachment to be connected. Daddy. And Thank you once it come to my heart, so this morning we talked similar uh, topics in morning sharing. Um, connection, we can switch on and off. But relation is done. Hogya, eternal. <laughs> there is no switch. Connection, if I don't like, I can switch off. Yes. But mother and father, I love or not, we cannot cut. It's done. Means relation is spontaneous. Relation is our original position. That's why we can go through good things, bad things, but Important is this spontaneous love. You are good, you are bad, you are kind to me, you are very bad to me, no matter. No reason, no season. I love you. No switch. Relation have no switch. Jarade. Jarade. And this kind of connection is going through soul to soul, not body to body. It will never be established. Real loving connection is going soul to soul, or maybe higher to say, swarup to swarup. This is real connection. And I think this is the subject which came yesterday on Japanese. In the evening in Croatian, our Sangha, we 
also talking about and now we are talking about in the morning so we can see how the radika is putting this nitai gore is giving us direction in which we have to focus ourselves don't go outside now now my subject is connection how to become more connected it's not necessary to think what radika did that and that and this and that no seven days like Guru they say meditate on it seven minutes meditate on it because this is the only way how we can relish no other way otherwise it will stay information Okay. We continue reading. How many jokes Srimati makes with her girlfriends while she while she picks flowers. Vishaka says, Saki Radhe, be careful. A greedy bumblebee is coming up to you <laughs> to drink the honey from your moon like face. And Shimati answers, Saki. Why should a bumblebee come to me, leaving behind a fragrant lotus-like faces of beautiful girls like you and your friends? You said that my face is like the moon. Well, Saki, the moon has no fragrance. So why the bee feel attracted to it? Shripad, in his kinkari form, sees how beautiful the wine buds are horripilating when they are touched by Sri Radha's beautiful hands. Though these pastimes he relishes through, sorry, through these pastimes, he relishes Vrindavana's natural beauty. Please, Antakaj, repeat this how beautiful and so on. One second. <laughs> so. Three pads in his kinkari form sees how beautiful the wine buds are horripilating when they are touched by Sri Radha's beautiful hands. So manjaris are buds. And like these buds, when they are touched by Radhika's hands, or when they witnessing how Radha Mohans are embracing each other, these buds receiving the pleasure, happiness. And they are starting to tremble, to horripilate. 
They are not the flowers like a sakis. They are buds. They have all qualities of sakis, but in the bud form. And when the plant, the wine, is trembling out of ecstasy, flowers are also trembling and horripilate. But the buds are horripilating the most. Most, the biggest oscillation there. They're moving in big oscillations. Because their feelings are not comp comparable to the feelings of the flowers. So in a very nice hidden way, Acharya is explaining this Manjari Bhav and how Manjaris are relishing this Parakya Bhav, Madhurya Rasa between Radha and Nama. Never be engaged in active role. So Sri Pat, like a kinkari, he is always near the footsteps, Pada, of beloved Sri Radha. I like her kinkari. And he is trembling. He is horripilating. Because he is relishing. All the symptoms of different bhavas appears in his heart, body, transcendental body. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were praying and crying for that symptoms to appear in his form. He wanted to feel it, to experience it. And in that way, he relished Manjari Bhagavan. And this is the natural beauty only possible in Vrindavan. Because the, in Vrindavan is only natural love. There is no awe and reverence, hesitations, fears, Godhead and Goddess. It's a natural, natural love. Even Krishna, when he is in Vrida, he has to change the mood of Godhead, Supreme Personality of Godhead. No one wants him in Vrindavana to be Supreme Personality. Go, go somewhere else. But in Vrindavana, he is Dira Lalita. He changed. He never leaves Vrindavana. He doesn't have to change. But we say like this. Everything is natural because the love is natural. You know, only beauty and sweetness. Nothing else is exists. And it said because of that, every step is a dance and every word is a song. In a natural land of love. Jaya Vrindavan Dham. Please continue. Sometime, sometimes Srimati desires to pick flowers from high branches. And Shyam seeing her stretched out armpit becomes attracted to her and runs up to her. Swamini cannot reach the flowers she wants, so Shyam helps her by pulling the branch down. 
just as Swamini catches the flower, Shyam lets go of the branch. So that tender Radhika flies up along with the branch. Fearfully, she calls out, Lalite, Lalite, help! While Shyam loudly laughs and claps his hands. So Lalita pulls the branch back down and takes care that Swamini returns to the ground. In his kinkari form, Sripat sees how beautiful Sri Radha's footprints have marked the earth of Vrindavan. After picking flowers, Shimati sits down on a jeweled platform and makes ornaments from different flowers with her own hands to decorate Shamasundar with. Shamasundar and the Sakis are overwhelmed with ecstasy when the birds begin to chirp of Srimati's glories. Then, when the transcendental vision vanishes, Sripa thinks, O oh mind, find pleasure in Radha's play forest. If I cannot directly experience Radha and Krishna's loving pastimes, then let me remember Sri Vrindavan and mentally witness these sweet nectarian pastimes. Shirad. Yeah, Shirad. And this is important instruction. If I cannot have direct darshan, if I cannot do direct seva, let me mentally witness sweet nectarian pastimes every day. He is praying for his strong Manjaribhav Nishta Sadhana. I want through my mind, by meditating through my spiritual Manjari body, mentally relish these pastimes. And this is the potency of the pastimes. These lilas can bring the pleasure to the heart and mind of Sadaka, and through his mind and consciousness, he can relish the pastimes. This is the potency of transcendental pastimes. And the more devotee is absorbed in his own Swarup, on the screen of his mind and heart, he can vividly, like Baba is saying this word, vividly, relish these visions of different pastimes. This is why bhajana is so important. And it requires practice. It's very clearly written said. 
if I cannot directly this experience, then let me remember Shivrinda. Let me. This is for Sadak. Let me. And mentally witness this sweet nectar pastimes. And the proof of this in the words. How is this proof in the words? Because when he is saying, let my mind find the pleasure, he is speaking like a sadaka who is deeply aware of his svarup, avish. And he is saying, let me ma my mind find pleasure in a play forest Radha, of Radha, sorry. And then he starts a next prayer, let me. Where, where the sprouts and vines are touched by Radha's hands. I want to say one thing. He didn't wrote this in one minute or one second. We are reading <laughs> in 10 seconds all words. But he had experiences of each part of these words directly. And Baba is explaining here in commentaries. He said, I want that my mind find pleasure in the play forest of Radha. Then play forest of Radha appears vividly in his vision. It's not like in factory, you, you know, <laughs> you are boom, 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 printing words or something. No. Then he moves where the sprouts and wines are touched by Radha hands. He is explaining his vision and he's relishing this. Then he sees the ground and the pastimes on the ground and the footprints. And finally, he hears the mad birds, how they are singing. So it's not written in 10 seconds or one minute or five minutes by meditation. He experienced every of his words. That did it. Thank you, Andakaji. You're most welcome, Sri Rade. You saved me. In the last <laughs> moment, I catch you and you save me. <laughs> Sri Rade. Pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the forest is Karuna Forest. Yeah, La Bangalatika Road. The forest is Karuna Forest, yes? Because this is connected with Karuna Mai. Thank you very much, devotees. I'm sorry. Today it's happened like this. We never know <laughs> where the stream of flow will bring us. I'm sorry for any mistake. Forgive me. Give me your blessings that I can change. Rade, rade. Love you. <laughs>